Okay, so we are going to look now at contrasting Lucy and Alice. Now, people know that comparing means looking at alikes and a contrasting is looking at differences. Some people mistakenly think that contrasting means looking at opposites. That if I contrast two things, I'm showing how they're opposite to each other. That's not true. I'm showing how they're different. This is just a difference, not an opposite. And the reason I'm saying that, if you look over at our chart, we have here that Lucy is forgiving and kind. We don't have it bold because we don't see that character trait in Alice. Now, that doesn't mean that Alice is an unforgiving person. It just means from what we've seen so far, we would definitely we would definitely say that Lucy has a character trait of being forgiving and being kind, and we haven't seen that with Alice. So that would just be a difference between the two characters. That would be something that they don't share. It doesn't mean that Alice is the opposite of that. Another thing is I get pushed back a lot on this aspect here, where I say Alice is very immature. I don't have that for Lucy, but sometimes I get pushback from my students. I say, wait a minute, immature is like being childish. Well, isn't Lucy childish? And I'll say, how is she childish? And they'll say, well, she trusts Mr. Tumnus and she goes back to his, uh, to his home and, and she doesn't know who this man is. He's a stranger. And sometimes when I'm teaching this lesson, which has always been up until this year, has always been in the months of January and February, I have a group of students who don't participate in the group lesson. They write on their own off to the side. They go ahead and write their essay. And sometimes when they're looking at how the two characters are similar and how the two characters are different, they write about how both of these characters are similarly uh, childish or similarly immature, and they put the evidence in. If you have evidence and you can elaborate, you can explain why that evidence is true, then I think that's a good thing and I accept it. Um, and so that's one of those things, if you want to make the case, maybe on your own and write in your in the, the uh, paragraph that looks at how the characters are similar, if you want to make that claim and, and have the evidence to back it up, you should do that. Um, we're going to now uh, write the contrasting part. I find the contrasting part of this assignment to be a little more difficult than the comparing. And a lot of teachers I know only assign it as a comparison. They only make students write about how these two characters are similar. I think even the curriculum has it that way. The reason I make it a comparing and contrasting essay is because, one, the practice is important for essay writing, and two, I do think the contrasting part's a little more difficult, even though there's not as much, because it forces students to think writing about things that maybe are not the easiest to write about, that make you really kind of look at the text, think about it, make a case, and it forces you to elaborate on something you're not always sure about, I think is an important part of being a middle school student. And so that's why I do that. So we're going to do that now. All right, I see the main difference is that we see that Lucy is forgiving and kind, and I'm, I'm going to make the case of Alice being immature. But again, you may not agree with me on that. All right, so let's go to our essay. I tab because I got a new paragraph. Despite their similarities, comma, both Lucy and Alice have character traits that differ from each other. Okay, that's my subclaim. I have one subclaim that backs up um, the fact that they have similarities and another subclaim looking at their differences, and all of those go to my thesis, which includes both of those. I always tell people, think of it like a pyramid. At the top is your thesis, and your thesis is the big idea. Then you have your subclaim. Your subclaim is the main idea of each body paragraph. So if I have uh, three body paragraphs, each of those is a subclaim, but they all back up the top of that pyramid, which is my thesis. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm gonna write first about um, Alice. No, we'll write first about Lucy because we go in order of the names. Lucy shows. She is a forgiving and kind person when she forgives Mr. Tumnus. I did not put that. 
Okay, so I've taken down the uh, chart that we looked at earlier, so we're going to see if we can do this. All right, we need to put in evidence to back up this idea. So before I put in evidence, I need to set up my quote. I need to explain in context what's happening in the story. When Lucy goes to Narnia, she meets a kind fawn named Mr. Tumnus, comma, who invites her back to his home for tea and refreshments. However, he later confesses to her that he was supposed to kidnap her for the witch who rules over Narnia. Mr. Tumnus instead, actually let's say instead, let's start with that. Instead, Mr. Tumnus helps Lucy escape and get back to the, let's say, I haven't introduced the lamppost, let's say the wardrobe. Okay. Before, before she leaves, he asks Lucy for forgiveness. Okay, so I go back to my chart. Oh, you know what? I do not have any evidence there in terms of a text-based evidence. So you know what I'm going to have to do? The reason it's good to have that there, I'm going to have to go back to the text. That's why it's good to always have the original source there. So let's go back. And we're in chapter two. And right here, let's see, he asked to be forgive. Uh, uh, he asked if she can ever forgive him. And she says, Why, of course I can. All right. So Lucy responds by saying, and I got to put it in quotes. Let's make sure we get it directly. Why, of course I can. Lucy agrees to forgive Mr. Tumnus and she holds no bad feelings towards him. This shows that she is a a good person and kind. Uh, a good and kind person. A good and kind person. On the other hand, Alice is a very immature and childish person. When she finds a bottle that says, drink me on it, and a cake that says, eat me. She doesn't question. And actually, let's, let's, I'm going to change this. She does not. Because when we're writing an essay, I don't believe in putting contractions in if we can help it, unless the text has them. She does not question what to do, or if this is a smart decision, but instead simply follows those instructions. 
this shows that she is a very trusting trusting child okay now I know that this is a little more difficult doing the contrasting part, but it's good practice anyway. So I've looked at how Lucy's forgiving. I've looked at how um, Alice is trusting and, um, and I've attached that. Now if look at the essay. You see this big paragraph here about their similarities and you see this little paragraph here compared to the other one about their con uh, contrasting how they're different. That's okay. Sometimes you're going to have more similarities and less differences. Sometimes you're going to have huge differences and not a lot of similarities, but it's good for the practice. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop there and we have uh, introduction, two body paragraphs, and the next lesson we're going to look at the conclusion.